The listening part of occupational English test has three parts, and in each part you hear a number of different extracts. At the beginning of the test, you will hear a beep sound. You have time to read the questions before you hear the extracts. You will hear each extract once only. You have to complete your answers as you listen. At the end of each test, you will be given two minutes to check answers. Part A. In this part of the test, you hear two different extracts. In each extract, a health professional is talking to his patient. For questions one to twenty-four, complete the notes with the information you hear. Now, look at the notes for extract one. Extract one, questions one to twelve. You hear a doctor talking to a patient called Brian Harris. For questions one to twelve, complete the following notes with a word or short phrase. You now have thirty seconds to look at the notes. Hello, doctor. Good morning. Good morning. What's your problem? Well, last year I had a traumatic injury to my left posterior. I got hit from a boat while I was in the water. I immediately rushed to the hospital where I had to undergo surgery. I'm still having an external fixation on the wound for healing fractures in the leg. I had undergone grafting and full thickness skin grafting close to defects in my posterior thigh. It is almost healed right in the gluteal fold on the left area. In several areas along the graft site and low in the leg, there is several hypergranulation tissue developed. Is there any bleeding from the wound? No, doctor. Okay. What's your age? Forty-two, doctor. Do you drink or smoke? No, doctor. Had any other illnesses in the past? Nothing other than Clostridium difficile in the recent past. Are you taking any medication? I'm taking Cipro and Flagyl. Are you allergic to any medicine? No, doctor. Any illness history of family members? My maternal grandmother had pancreatic cancer. My father had prostate cancer, and he has heart disease and diabetes. Well, your physical examination results are perfectly okay. Cardiology reports are regular. There is no S3, S4, or gallop. There is no murmur. Abdomen is soft. It is non-tender. There is no mass or organomegaly. Your right lower extremity is unremarkable. Peripheral pulse is good. Your left lower extremity is significant for the split thickness skin graft closure of a large defect in the posterior thigh, which is nearly healed. Hypergranulation tissue both on your gluteal folds on the left side. There is one small area right essentially within the graft site, and there is one small area down lower on the calf area. There's an external fixation on that comes out laterally on your left thigh. The pin sites look clean. There are several multiple areas of hypergranulation tissue on the left posterior leg associated with a sense of trauma to your right posterior leg. I would recommend series of treatment with chemical cauterization of these areas till these are closed. Extract two, questions thirteen to twenty-four. You hear a physician talking to a patient called Thomas Andrews. For questions thirteen to twenty-four, complete the following notes with a word or short phrase. You now have thirty seconds to look at the notes.
Good morning, Doctor. Good morning. Have seated. May I know your problem? Well, I'm a patient with hypertension, chronic intermittent bipedal edema, and recurrent leg venous ulcers. I had a vascular surgery for non-healing right ankle stasis ulcer. I have a serious concern today that I had a low-grade fever of 100.2 early this morning. Otherwise, everything was well. The thing is, I was not even aware of the fever. I do have some ankle pain, worse on the right than the left. Okay, what's your age? Fifty-two, doctor. Do you drink or smoke? No, doctor. Are you getting nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea? No, doctor. May I know your previous illness history? Well, hypertension, exploratory laparotomy in 2016 for abdominal obstruction, cholecystectomy in 2017, chronic intermittent bipedal edema, venous insufficiency, chronic recurrent stasis ulcers. What medications are you taking? Primaxin, daptomycin, clonidine, furosemide, potassium chloride, lisinopril, metoprolol, renitidine, colase, amlodipine, zinc sulfate, lortab, multivitamins with minerals. Are you allergic to any medicine? No, doctor. Well, the physical examination shows heart rate 73, respiratory rate 20. Blood pressure 104 over 67, temperature 98.3, and oxygen saturation 92% on room air. There is hyperpigmentation involving distal calf on both legs. There is an open wound on the right medial malleolar area, measuring 9 by 5 centimeters, with minimal serous drainage. Peri wound. Is hyperpigmented with a hint of erythema extending proximally to the medial aspect, distal third of the right lower leg. There is warmth but minimal tenderness on palpation of this area. There is also a wound on the right lateral malleolar area, measuring four by three centimeters. Another open wound on the left medial malleolar area, measuring seven by four centimeters. Wound edges are poorly defined. Laboratory results show white blood cell count is 5.8 with 64% neutrophils, H and H 11.3 over 33.8, and platelet count 176,000, BUN and creatine 9.2 over 0.52, albumin 3.6, AST 25, ALC 9, ALKFOS 87. And total bilirubin 0.6. Chest X-ray shows chronic bivascular subsegmental atelic stasis, likely related to elevated hemidiaphragm, secondary to chronic ileus. No absolute findings. You have multiple previous wound cultures, positive for pseudomonas enterococcus and stenotrophomonas, fevers, right leg, ankle, cellulitis. Chronic recurrent bilateral ankle venous ulcers, hypertension. I am ordering two sets of blood cultures, injection with daptomycin and primaxin four. I am ordering an MRI of the right ankle to check for underlying osteomyelitis. Follow up results of wound cultures. Additional treatment and medications are upon follow up. That is the end of Part A. Now look at Part B. Part B. In this part of the test, you will hear six different extracts. In each extract, you'll hear people talking in a different healthcare environment. For questions 25 to 30, choose the answer A, B, or C, which fits best according to what you hear. You will have time to read each question before you listen to the audio. Complete the answers as you listen to the audio. Now look at the question 25. You hear a monologue by a physician explaining about gallstones. Now read the question.
Gallstones are formed due to an imbalance in the composition of bile, resulting in hard stones that are made of pigment or crystallized cholesterol, or a mixture of the two. They can range in size from as small as a sand grain to as large as a tennis ball. One can have a single large gallstone, dozens to hundreds of smaller gallstones, or a combination of both small and large stones. There are two types of gallstones. Typically, patients with pigment stones have cirrhosis of the liver, biliary tract infections, and hereditary blood disorders, including sickle cell anemia. These are all conditions that produce too much bilirubin, of which the stones are made of. Pigment stones tend to be dark brown or black. Cholesterol stones are formed as a result of bile that is made of too much cholesterol or bilirubin and not enough bile salts. They can also form when the gallbladder fails to empty during the digestive process. They are usually yellow-green gallstones, which are the most common type. Question 26. You hear a discussion between a nurse and a doctor on Crohn's disease. Now, read the question. Hello, doctor. What are the different types of Crohn's diseases? Well, Crohn's disease is a chronic, incurable disease that can cause inflammation anywhere along the digestive tract. Crohn's disease is characterized by symptoms of abdominal pain, diarrhea, cramping, weight loss, bloating, and blood in stools. Crohn's disease affects people differently, mainly due to the different types of the disease and the areas they affect. The most common types of Crohn's disease are ileocolitis that affects the colon and adjacent ileum, jejunalitis affects the jejunum, Iliitis affects the ileum, Crohn's granulomatous affects the colon, gastroduodenal Crohn's disease affects the stomach and adjacent duodenum. Question 27. You hear a discussion between a nurse and a doctor on diagnosis methods for endometrial cancer and its stages. Now read the question. Hello, doctor. What are the methods of diagnosing endometrial cancer and its stages? Endometrial cancer is the main type of uterine cancer, starts in the cells that make up the endometrium, and then shed each month during menstruation. The cancer is only in the uterus during stage 1. During the stage 2, the cancer is in cervix and uterus. The cancer spreads beyond uterus within the pelvic area during stage 3. And during stage 4, the cancer has spread outside the pelvic area to bladder, rectum, or other parts. The diagnosis for endometrial cancer include a computerized tomography scan, chest x-ray, positron emission tomography scan, and blood tests. The results of these diagnoses will determine the cancer stage. Question 28. You hear a discussion between a nurse and a doctor on types of hemorrhoids and their effects. Now read the question. Hello, doctor. What are the types of hemorrhoids and their effects? Well, hemorrhoids are a common but aggravating condition involving inflamed and swollen veins in the rectum or anus. Often, external hemorrhoids are identified by a lump on the surface of the anus. These tend to be the most uncomfortable because they are nerve endings in the area. Anal pain, itchiness, tenderness when wiping are some of the symptoms. The pain can become especially severe if the hemorrhoid clots. Typically, internal hemorrhoids are painless and undetected with no visible signs. Pain can occur if the hemorrhoid begins to prolapse out of the anal canal, though this is rare. If the hemorrhoid becomes fixed outside of the anal canal, the pain can often be excruciating, especially if thrombosed. On rare occasion, such hemorrhoids will require emergency care. Question 29. You hear a discussion between a nurse and a doctor on different categories of chemotherapy drugs. Now read the question.
Hello, doctor. What are the different categories of chemotherapy drugs? There are several types of chemotherapy drugs that vary both in their functioning and on which part of the cell cycle they work. Alkylating agents are nonspecific drugs that directly damage DNA. Examples include cytoxin and myloran. Antimetabolites work by pretending they are nutritional sources for the cell. Cancer cells take up these drugs instead of nutrients and essentially starve to death. Examples include navelbine, VP16, and Gemzar. Plant alkaloids include drugs obtained from plant sources. Examples include cosmogen and mutamycin. Anti-tumor antibiotics differ from the types of antibiotics used to treat bacterial infections. These drugs work by preventing cancer cells from reproducing. Examples include adriamycin and cerubidine. Question 30. You hear a discussion between a nurse and a doctor on different types of anemia. Now read the question. Hello, doctor. What are the different types of anemia? Anemia results from a decreased number of red blood cells, or hemoglobin, the protein that carries oxygen. Anemia can result from iron deficiency, sickle cell disease, or thalassemia. Neutropenia is a decreased number of neutrophils, a type of white blood cell, which are an essential part of our immune system that fights off bacterial infections. There are numerous causes, including autoimmune neutropenia, Swachman Diamond Syndrome, and cyclic neutropenia. Polycythemia vera is a condition in which our bone marrow makes an excessive number of red blood cells. This increase can elevate your risk of clot formation. Immune thrombocytopenic purpura is a condition in which the platelets are marked as foreign and are therefore destroyed. This can lead to very low platelet counts and bleeding. Thrombocytosis is a condition caused by an increased number of platelets. That is the end of Part B. Now, look at Part C. Part C. In this part of the test, you'll hear two different extracts. In each extract, you'll hear health professionals talking about specific aspects of their work. For questions 31 to 42, choose the answer A, B, or C, which fits best according to what you hear. Complete the answers as you listen to the audio. Now look at Extract 1. Extract 1, questions 31 to 36. You hear the lecture given by a physician on the topic blood type classifications. You have 90 seconds to read questions 31 to 36. The human body contains about 10 pints of blood depending on the size of the individual. However, the blood composition is not the same in each individual. This is what makes the different blood types. The best method of grouping of blood is the ABO system, although there are other groups. 
within the ABO group, there are four major categories that are divided into eight common blood types. A, B, O, and AB. Blood consists of cells and a yellow liquid known as plasma. The group of blood depends on what each part of the blood contains. There are two main blood group systems, ABO antigens and rhesus antigens. These two antigens are used to classify blood types. Normally, viruses and bacteria carry an antigen. During an infection, the antigen marks them as a foreign substance to the body that are usually not found in the body. Most red blood cell antigens are protein molecules on the surface of red blood cells. White blood cells produce antibodies as an immune defense. These antibodies target antigens and attack the foreign substance. Cross-matching of blood types is very crucial because if a patient receives red blood cells with antigens that is not present in his body, then it will reject and attack the new red blood cells. The ABO blood grouping method is used to determine the different types of antigens in the red blood cells and antibodies in the plasma. This system and RHD antigen status determine the blood type that will match for a safe red blood cell transfusion. There are four ABO groups. In group A, the surface of the red blood cells contains A antigen and the plasma has anti-B antibody that would attack any foreign B antigen containing red blood cells. In group B, the surface of the red blood cells contains B antigen and the plasma has anti-A antibody that would attack any foreign A antigen containing red blood cells. In group AB, the red blood cells have both A and B antigens, but the plasma does not contain anti-A or anti-B antibodies. Patients with type AB can receive any ABO blood type. In group O, the plasma contains both types of anti-A and anti-B antibodies, but the surface of the red blood cells does not contain any A or B antigens. Having none of these A or B antigens means that they can be safely transfused to a person with any ABO blood type. Some red blood cells contain the Rh factor, which is also called RHD antigen. Therefore, rhesus grouping adds another dimension. In case the red blood cells contain the RHD antigen, they are RHD positive. If they do not contain RHD antigen, they are RHD negative. That means there are eight major blood types in the ABO slash RHD blood grouping system. For instance, in the US, 30% population are A positive, A plus. A negative occurs in 6% of people. There are only 9% of population with B positive, while B negative occurs in just 2% of the population. AB positive occurs in 4% of people and AB negative occurs in just 1% of people. O positive occurs in 39% of people while O negative occurs in just 9% of people. About 82% of the US population has RHD positive blood. O negative blood contains neither A or B or RHD antigens. Therefore, these red blood cells can be transfused to nearly all patients of any blood type. Group O negative is considered as the universal donor type. On the other hand, AB positive blood contains no anti-A or anti-B or RHD antibodies. Therefore, patients with this blood type can receive nearly any type of red blood cell transfusion. This type is referred to as the universal recipient type. In case a patient with group B antigen receives red blood cells from a person with group A antigen, their body will reject the transfusion. This is because patients with B antigen on their red blood cells have anti-A antibody in their plasma. The anti-A antibody in the plasma then attacks and destroys the A antigen donor red blood cells. During pregnancy, a mother may have a different RHD type to the fetus as the fetus can inherit a different blood group from the genes of the father. Therefore, a risk is involved if the mother is RHD negative and the fetus is RHD positive. A small amount of red blood cells from the fetus can enter the mother's bloodstream, resulting in creation of anti-RHD antibody in the plasma by the mother, which is known as sensitization. 
A problem will arise if this antibody then detects the foreign antigen in the blood cells of the fetus. And if they attack the red blood cells of the fetus as a defense mechanism, which can result in severe jaundice and brain damage if undetected. Therefore, an injection of anti-D immunoglobin G helps to prevent the production of this antibody in the mother and decrease the impact of a sensitizing event on the fetus. Anti-D immunoglobin G dosing is usually given at 24 weeks of the pregnancy and at times an additional dose during 34 weeks of pregnancy. The effect of anti-D immunoglobin G lasts up to 12 weeks. During blood test procedure, the patient's blood will be mixed with a variety of serum samples. Each serum sample consists of a different blood type, with the clotting agent removed. Then, the reaction of the blood sample of the patient with the serum sample will be monitored. The antibodies in the serum will cause a different reaction in each one. For instance, if a reaction occurs when the blood sample is mixed with the serum consisting of blood type A, which contains anti-B antibody, the unknown blood type of the patient must be type B. Now look at extract 2, questions 37 to 42. You hear the monologue of a physician giving a lecture on the type of eczema. You have 90 seconds to read questions 37 to 42. Eczema is not a single health condition. It is a recognizable reaction method seen in a number of skin diseases. Atopic dermatitis is a common cause of eczema that is more prevalent in the patients with asthma and hay fever. The signs and symptoms of eczema include tiny blisters or vesicles that can weep and ooze, eventually producing crusted, thickened plaques of skin. It is always quite itchy. It is significant to distinguish the different causes of eczema, as the effect of treatments will also differ. Eczema starts as red, raised, tiny blisters containing a clear fluid atop red, elevated plaques, and when these blisters break, the affected skin starts to weep and ooze. In chronic eczema, the blisters are less prominent and the skin is elevated, thickened, and scaling. There are about 11 distinct types of skin conditions that produce eczema. Atopic dermatitis tends to begin early in life with those with a predisposition to influent allergies, but it probably does not have an allergic basis. Characteristically, rashes occur on the cheeks, neck, elbow, and knee creases, and ankles. Irritant dermatitis occurs when the skin is repeatedly exposed to toxic substances or due to excessive washing. Allergic contact dermatitis occurs after repeated exposures to the same allergic substance. The immune recognition system becomes activated at the site of the next exposure and produces a dermatitis. Poison ivy allergy is a good example of allergic contact dermatitis.
Stasis dermatitis commonly occurs on the swollen lower legs of patients who have poor blood circulation in the veins of the legs. Fungal infections can produce a pattern similar to many other types of eczema. However, the fungus can be visualized with a scraping under the microscope or grown in culture. Scabies is caused by an infestation by the human itch mite and produces a rash very similar to other forms of eczema. Pomphylix or dyshydriotic eczema is very common and affects the hands and occasionally the feet by creating an itchy rash composed of tiny blisters on the sides of the fingers or toes and palms or soles. Lichen simplex chronicus produces thickened plaques of skin commonly found on the shins and neck. Numular eczema is a non-specific term for coin-shaped plaques of scaling skin, most often on the lower legs of aged persons. In the xerotic eczema, the skin will crack and ooze due to excessive dryness. Sybaretic dermatitis produces a rash on the scalp, face, ears, and occasionally the mid-chest in adults. In infants, it produces a weepy, oozy rash behind the ears and are often quite extensive, involving the entire body. That is the end of Part C.